Hey, CityCast Denver, it's Maggie Azzalini. While CityCast Denver works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background, making sure that our listeners are connecting with the very best that Denver has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Denver what it is. The business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Denverites who put together the food festivals that you enjoy and concerts you attend, the exhibits you can't miss, and who make those candles that your mom can't stop talking about. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Denver podcast and on our sister daily newsletter, Hey Denver. Shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm and let's connect. Today on CityCast Denver, the reopening of Casa Bonita is so close. We've been waiting for years to see what the South Park guys have in store for the Pink Palace on West Colfax. But once the silly fun and nostalgia fades, does any of this actually matter? We called up the mayor of Lakewood himself, Adam Paul, to hear how he's planning to ride this hype train all the way to a better future for Denver's second largest suburb. Today is Thursday, May 25th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Mayor Adam Paul, welcome to CityCast Denver. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. This is really cool. So I want to get a sense of your relationship to Casa Bonita before we really dig into anything. So I have to ask, have you ever had a birthday party there? Absolutely. (laughs) Do you have a favorite memory from the last couple of decades of Casa Bonita? Yeah, certainly. You know, I think going back as a kid, the birthday parties were so much fun. You know, certainly whether it was mine or just being able to go attend with somebody. And then as I got older, it was uh, always a great topic when I'd go out of town or be in other states and people would say, well, where's Lakewood, Colorado? And I'm like, home of Casa Bonita. And I'm not (laughs) kidding you. Somebody always knew. They're like, oh, yeah, Casa Bonita. And then for a while, I had a, a dear friend uh, of mine. We would go a couple of days before Christmas and have kind of our little lunch. And then um, 40 West, right before the pandemic, that's our arts district. They did a big theme night at Casa. And so a lot of just different special memories. So I heard from Westward editor Patty Calhoun that you said that you want to go cliff diving at Casa Bonita when it's open. Um, is that true? And can we hold you to it? Brie, that is true. And I hope that you do hold me to it. And I think we should hold everybody to it. Going back to to a couple of my state of the city speeches, uh, I was elected in 2015 and, and I had closed, I think, a couple of them with, you know, just so everybody knows the reason why I became mayor was so that one day I could do a cannonball from the cliffs at Casa Bonita. <laughs> and certainly we had a lot of fun with it. And now it spiraled into you know, this great opportunity that that they're doing here in our community. And, and maybe there's a chance I'm holding out. I, I end office in November, so we got to get it done. You know, you just mentioned sort of this opportunity that Costa Bonita is kind of offering to the community. Um, what does that opportunity look like to you as as the person who's in charge of Lakewood? We've had this opportunity to have the creation of an arts district, the 40 West Arts District. And this is a key piece of that. And there was great fear when when COVID hit that they were going to go away. And mm. frankly, the, the previous ownership group didn't really care, I think, about a lot of different things, whether it was community, whether it was quality. It was something that I think brought checks in and people would still flock to it. And flip, flip to now, you know, we have a group that's super engaged. They like to have a lot of fun. Um, and they've really tried to, one, preserve and enhance, and then adding uh, Dana Rodriguez is just incredible. So it's going to be uh, something that's going to continue, I think, uh, an incredible legacy. It's going to be much better, much cleaner, still a lot of fun, <laughs> and it's going to have an economic ripple, I think, throughout our community. What do you see as the economic ripple effect of Casa Bonita? Like, do you see it spurring development in the surrounding sort of parking lots? Do you see it as something that's going to bring us national attention in a new way? What do you, how do you see that as, as the mayor? I think all of the above and and go back to 
COVID and, and when this group took over, they kept their employees on and paid them to go work at nonprofits in our community. I mean, you just don't see that, right? And so that commitment, so that is just one piece, right? Making sure that their long-term employees were taken care of and then also enhancing the opportunities for our nonprofits. And then 500 and some jobs, right? And and a group of folks that care about their employees. And so that has that economic benefit. And then also drawing people to this area. Again, we have an arts district, we have an art line, a lot of different amenities. And so there'll be ancillary dollars of not only going to Caspanita, which where we would get sales tax from. I think that the previous ownership did around $6 million a year in, in sales. So that equates to, you know, 3% on that is it goes to the city of Lakewood for sales tax. But also, hey, let's check out these other areas and see what else is happening in this corridor. And I think over the next few years, it's really going to going to change in meaningful ways. I have to say the reputation of Colfax <laughs> is spotty at best, different depending on who you talk to. I'm an aficionado of Colfax. Yes. I've always appreciated it, but it has definitely been a place that elicits different kinds of feelings from folks. Do you see this as sort of like a dawning of a new Colfax or sort of how do you view it in this bigger picture of this this main street yeah. that that we we know so well? Well, and I think was a Playboy years ago called it the right. wickedest <laughs> the avenue. longest <laughs> wickedest the avenue wickedest street yeah. in America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, I think I think what we've tried to do is embrace the the grit and glitter, right? So there's opportunity for all of it and it's when you look at kind of that American story and that history, that is a lot of it. You have areas that have been reborn. You have areas that are up and coming. You have areas that are struggling. And so I, I think it will continue to maintain that. I think there's a, a sense that that is who we are and let's embrace it. It can also come with its challenges. But um, I think, you know, Lauren Coleman is is purchased the White Swan, one of the old motels, and she's got some really cool plans. You know, right now she's helping house some of our uh, unhoused families there, which has been great, but she looks to redevelop that. And you have iconic, you know, motels like the Big Bunny and a lot of neon and these fun things. And so I hope that this will allow us to, you know, take care of that history, to embrace it and also have new investment, but not change Colfax totally. So... You had mentioned this, that it was really amazing that, you know, that Matt and Trey and, and their folks came in and, and continued to employ the Casa Bonita folks and also worked with nonprofits. Before they stepped in, though, was there a moment when you thought, oh, gosh, this is over or it, it could we could be seeing the pandemic ended a lot of things for us. Did you think this might be the end of Casa Bonita? Yeah, certainly. And and uh, it, it was concerning because there is that great history and you know, it employs a lot of people. So yeah, we were, we were super concerned and it's just been amazing. It, it truly is a blessing to our community, which is interesting to say, right? Casa Bonita and blessing. And <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Uller's Garden. Did you know you can buy fresh, locally grown greens from an organic farm right on South Broadway? Uller's Garden is a hydroponic container farm specializing in living lettuce. That's right, when you order from Uller's, their lettuce heads come with the roots intact, meaning your greens are picked fresh and will last longer. Uller's uses 95% less water than the average farm and is all organic. No pesticides or chemicals here, so you don't even have to worry about washing your greens. Sign up for their farm share program now and pick up a box of fresh lettuce, arugula, and basil every Tuesday, June through August. Think global, but act local and support your local environmentally friendly farm today. Visit ullersgarden.com for more information. That's U-L-L-R-S garden.com. This episode is brought to you by Bad Boy Boards. Based right here in Denver, Bad Boy Boards takes raw hardwood and turns it into world-class cutting boards, charcuterie boards, chess boards, and more. It's a local brand with high quality and great prices. 
which is great because home chefs like me don't have to settle for anything less than simple elegance in world-class quality hardwood boards and dust covers. They also make gifting customizable and super easy. Oh, and this is super cool. If you stop by Bad Boy Boards, you can watch a live stream of the manufacturing floor so you can actually see your cutting board being made. Seriously, it's so cool. It's like if Willy Wonka made cutting boards. Learn more and order your own individually designed, constructed, and finished board at badboyboards.com. I think that I heard at that point that um, Casa Bonita was, if not one of the biggest, the biggest employer of youth in Lakewood. Do you yeah. do you know anything about that? You know, I, absolutely. And, and for years, in fact, I was just at some graduation parties this this weekend and and ran into you know people that are whose kids are now graduating and they used to work at Casa Bonita. And so there was this, yeah, a great history of of our youth being able to work there, and of course the dive teams could moonlight there as divers and you know, all those fun things. So it's got a, a, a great history. Yeah. And it just like, I don't know. I mean, if I was a teenager, if I lived closer, I definitely would have tried to work there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's For never sure. too late, right? If I'm trying to do a cannonball, <laughs> I think you could still have that opportunity as well. <laughs> well, I have to say though, the thing I'm a little bit worried about is like, they've hired some really high caliber folks on the entertainment side, like folks that I know from the immersive art space sure. who are doing incredible things. But like, are we going to, is it going to get all Hollywooded out and we're just going to hire actors or are kids going to still have an opportunity to work there? Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be all of the above and, and they've really focused on having local employment and f I mean, 500 positions. So, I, you know, the entertainment is going to be fabulous, but it's still going to have that, that feel that we all, you know, grew up and, and came to know. I have to ask you about housing a little bit because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about Anytime there's an economic driver or something like you said, bringing or continuing 500 jobs, but, you know, can, can folks live near there that are working there? Um, I know that in Lakewood, growth was a, has been a really hot button issue these last couple of years. And there was a growth cap in place until recently when the state legislature passed a bill sort of preempting it. Have you heard any concern from your constituents about like Casa Bonita sparking in any sort of like unwanted growth or change that folks are afraid of? Well, you know, that area, if you can picture it, is along the West Line, so the W Line RTD. So years ago, the community actually said, hey, if we're going to densify, let's try to do that in this area. So we are seeing a lot of new development that has, you know, taken hold in the last probably six, seven, eight years. And the community did come together and put a 1% growth cap on, on growth as a whole in Lakewood, which is has a weird exemption along the Colfax Corridor. And so again, as you said, the, I think it's House Bill 1255 will outlaw or, or make those moot. We will be having a conversation as council about that in the next few next few months, I believe, to see and how we react. But this was also a big piece for the governor this last year in in the legislative session, and it is so important. How do you find that balance? And you know, gentrification is always a concern. You know, as in this arts district, as you know, the artists come in, make an old you know, a place really cool and hip and then unfortunately price themselves out. So we have right. that in mind as to how do we do this effectively, efficiently? How do we look for more opportunities to really have affordable housing? And something I'm, I'm really passionate about is uh, affordable ownership. How can people that live and work in this corridor be able to buy into the corridor and really set roots moving forward? Yeah, I, I'm thinking like, oh man, it would be pretty sweet to be like, oh, I, I live in an apartment building and you can see Casa Bonita yes, from my window. Yeah. <laughs> Does that ever irk you though, that people like me are like, this is Denver's greatest thing. And you're like, excuse me, it's Lakewood's. We get, thing. we get a little bit about that. And you know, my, my friend, Governor Polis, you know, I mean, he, he's really, you know, been able to jump and, and be kind of the chief promoter of this. And sometimes I have to think, you know, this is in Lakewood, Lakewood, Colorado. And uh, the yeah. beautiful Col Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design is right behind it. And it's an yes. incredible facility. So there's so many really great things that hopefully can continue to blossom through this. So, you know, it's kind of been uh, ambiguous. It's vague. We don't know when it's going to open. We don't know what's <laughs> happening. And I imagine for someone like you, you're managing a city. I'm thinking about, you know, I don't know, two decades ago, Denver got the Grand Prix. So all of a sudden we had to shut everything down, yeah. but it was planned ahead. 
Do you have an idea of the crowds you're expecting? What are you, how are you planning for this? So our city staff has been wonderful and the Casa Bonita team, uh, the state of Colorado and RTD have been trying to work with them also on opportunities for overflow parking. So I, I think things might start out as a phased approach for them, which may eliminate the huge influx at first, which would be smart. But uh, much like you, you know, we're we're just trying to be supportive and waiting for, for them to move forward. But the communication has been wonderful and it, it won't be perfect, but we're trying to plan for as much as we can. So I have to say you're like giving me a little bit of an inkling here. You're saying a phased approach. You think that... Have they given you any insight into what that might look like? Like certain people can come in first or certain amounts of people. What do you, what do you know, Mayor? Yeah, I, I, feel I like you... you know, I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> I, you know, understand maybe how a business of this size and you have quality control, you have 500 and some employees, you have, you know, plus other tenants in that shopping center. Right. And right. So do you just rip it open and open it all or do you kind of slow roll into it and you know from what i've seen and, and how i've seen the thoughtfulness the time they've been willing to take i feel like they're going to take a more of an approach that would allow everything to come together in a in a more measured way so i feel like i know everyone in this town and i can't get an invitation to Casa Bonita. Mayor, have you had a special early tour? Have you gotten a little mayor's privilege with the Casa Bonita situation? Well, I feel very, very fortunate that I've been able to go in a couple of times. And uh, I've been sworn to secrecy by by the gorilla that uh, if I do say anything, I'll be thrown <laughs> off the cliff. So I can tell you that, again, with, with anything, and, and if you've just understood how much they've cared for our community... They're incredible caretakers of that legacy, and, and people are going to be really excited. So how's that for not answering your question? I know. I was like, that was a great non-answer, <laughs> politician. Uh, but I, I'll tell for our listeners, I see on your face you were smiling, so I feel good. I feel very good about what you have seen with your own eyes. You should feel really good, and you should know that, again, <laughs> the amount of time and energy to put this back together and, and make it meaningful, they've, they've spared no no expense. So my last question is, you, like me, have had birthdays there. We have spent probably more time there than the average person. Um, is there something that they could change that you wouldn't be able to handle? Certainly the sofa pee is in the flag. That would, that, that would kill me. Changing the carpet, good thing, right? I don't think they ever change <laughs> right? the carpet. Um, walking in and you were always struck with that, we're at Casa Bonita smell. That might be gone as well. Yeah, I feel you. I know it's funny. I'm like, will I be sad that I won't smell chlorine and old carpet and Mexican food? Or will I be happy that yeah. I don't smell that anymore? <laughs> I guess we'll wait. We'll wait and see. Um, Mayor Adam Paul, thank you for uh, indulging me in this, but yeah. thank you so much for, for joining me. No, thank you. And thanks for caring about Lakewood and taking the time to engage. And here's what else Denverites are talking about. What it's like to work for Amazon. A new lawsuit claims that delivery drivers right here in Colorado are peeing in bottles and pooping in doggy bags because they aren't allotted time on their shifts to use the restroom. One employee, an Iraq war veteran, compared the conditions to combat zones. And another said she carries a change of clothes in her truck in case of a bathroom accident. CPR reports that according to the suit, Amazon allegedly uses GPS and other surveillance to keep workers on task. So drivers often have to get out of the view of cameras to use the back of their trucks as a makeshift restroom. The suit is seeking compensation for missed state mandated breaks and a change in Amazon's workplace policies. Grim stuff. And in sad news for me and like three other people, Boston Market's headquarters in Golden have been seized by the Colorado Department of Revenue. According to the Denver Post, the Boston-born company with three locations left in the state owes Colorado more than $300,000 in back taxes and has changed the locks on the building. Sounds like I might need to find a new spot for my favorite depression survival meal of mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and cinnamon apples. 
that's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell the PR person at Casa Bonita about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, by texting Denver to 66866. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. The bucket that drips water in the mines? Is that still there? (laughs) I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just fixing a problem. (laughs) Okay. I could talk all day about Casa Bonita. All right.